Welcome to this tutorial on building Java desktop applications. And in this tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is traversing the file system and using a file filter so that we can select a specific type of file um, and be able to output that. It's a variation on a previous tutorial that we covered, which was um, traversing the file system using an iterative call. But this time, we're going to handle things slightly different. So, Let's um, take a look at how we use file filters whilst traversing the file system. As mentioned earlier, in a previous tutorial, we demonstrated how you could traverse the file system using a recursive call. What we're going to do this time is something slightly different. But let me take you back to talk about what we previously did so we can appreciate the differences between what we're doing here. Um, when, you do, when we did the recursive call, what we did was we started with a directory um, which I've labeled one here and we went into that directory and um, and we processed the information in that directory then we went down to the next directory which is the first one it came across underneath and processed everything there then we went to the next one because there was nothing below the second the, the directory number two, we went to directory number three, we processed that, and then when we finished with that, we put, went dropped down because there were some directories below, did number four, then number five, then number six, then we came back up and did number seven. Now, that's fine if you want to process everything and you're happy just to take your time and walk your way through. Um, if you want to process information um, in a breadth first rather than a depth first manner then what you want to do is you don't want to cascade all the way down to the bottom of the tree and then come back up what you want to do is move across um, let me show you what we're trying to do here so we have still got our first directory there then our second directory is there which is the same the third directory same as last time only this time instead of dropping down to these subdirectories here we move across and do the fourth directory and then when we've done that we'll come and do the fifth sixth and seventh that all sit below the third directory so as you can see what we're doing is we're going across the tree rather than going down the tree um, and this is just what was required for this particular example so it's slightly different from the previous tutorial on top of that we are also only going to be interested in um, image files of specific file extensions. So we're going to use a file filter to actually filter out all the files in a particular directory. So we can only find we can we find those that are image files. So let's um, turn to our Eclipse editor and um, see how we're going to put this together. So the first thing we need to do is obviously create our Java project. Um, I haven't really considered what we'll call this, but we'll call this um, File Traversal with Filter. Um, again, we're not going to be doing anything special with any of the later versions of Java, so I can stick with Java 1.6, that's fine and I'm just going to accept all the default standards. So there we have our project, we've got our source file, and now what we're going to do is we're going to create um, our first class. Now, I'm not going to start with the class that has my main method. I'm going to start with another class that we are going to use later, but I want to get that out of the way first, and then we'll come back and look at how we make use of this class. And the class I'm going to start with is the filter class, the class that's actually going to allow us to say we only want image files. So, um, so I'll call it what file name, um, file name, filter, option, and I want to put it in a package. Um, put it in the I/O package and. Um, I'm not going to extend it from a class, but I am going to implement the file name filter. Oh, well, if I can 
and spell it right. Look at that, yep. So file name filter, there we are. And um, we'll say finish. So obviously file name filter is um, provides us with the, the interface methods that we need um, to do filtering. And there's, a, there's only one, there's, there's this accept method that returns a boolean. Um, so you pass it, let's rename these to make it a little more intuitive. Now, so we'll pass it a directory and we'll pass it a file name and it will return a boolean, so true if it is of the, the type we're looking for and false if it's not. And we're going to be looking for images as we said. So, um, and we're going to do that by looking at the extension file. Um, now, forgive me with my typing here because um, I do tend to go a bit a, a bit astray. So we've got GIF. Now, what I'm doing here is you'll notice I'm doing upper and lower case. Um, this is one way you could do it. The other way you could do it is you could take the file name you're converting and force it to uppercase or force it to lowercase and then you wouldn't have to check both. Um, but um, I'll leave that for you to uh, modify to improve your code. Um, uh, I think we'll just do one more. Um, that's the other thing. I'm not exhaustively picking every image file there. Um, we'll just go with that. So we've got JPEGs, bitmaps, GIFs, and PNGs. And then we're just going to say for um, we have um, and um, we have a variable that we can use to iterate through. And we'll go through all of the extension files we just defined up there and we'll check to see whether our file um, our file name now there's a nice little ends with which is really useful um, so that just makes it easy for you to Check to see whether you've got a match, and if it does end, of course, we want to do the return true. So nice and simple. And if we don't return true, then we're obviously going to return false down here. And um, I've got an equal sign, far too many equal signs in there, and I can't spell length. So as I said, we're going to use this class later on. I put breakpoint in by mistake as well. There we are. So I'm going to save that. And we'll now build our main class, or our class with our main method in, and we'll take a look at how we can then use that, use this class we've written to help us filter out those image files from our directory. So I'm going to create a new, another new class, keep it in the same package, and I'm going to call it file traversal 2 because I think I may have already previously had a file traversal and I don't want to have any confusion later on. You can of course, you're at liberty to call it whatever you, you feel would be appropriate. So. Uh, that's all we're going to do. We've got our main method there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with we, we want a file type um, which is actually going to be our directory and we're going to define our starting directory. So where we're going to start our code. Um, this isn't a Unix system so, oops, so I don't need to worry about case sensitivity. Now what I've gone and done is I've created 
a directory on my system that I've then been able to put in a sample set of um, files and, and other directories in that means I don't have to, the code won't run for ages, it, it's a little test sample size that just exercises it and proves the point. So it's in traverse, it's off the C drive and it's traverse test. So that's why I'm going to start from there. You can start from anywhere you want. Um, I've chosen to start from there. Then next we're going to do is we're going to have an array list. I'm going to use the array list to hold a collection of files. Now these are going to be actually directories, subdirectories. So every time we come across a subdirectory, we can um, add it into our array list and then we can go through and process them. Um, now, I've used this as an array list. What you could have done um, is, or, or what could have been done is, could have used a stack and pop things on and off. So everything that needs to be processed, you, you, you'd pop onto the stack and when you've processed it, you could pop it off. Um, I haven't done that, because um, like I say, I'm trying to navigate through all of the directories in a particular order um, for a particular reason, which one day I may come back and talk about. So I haven't chosen to do that, but you could choose to implement a stack and pop things on and off and do it that way. Um, if you so desire, another interesting little um, additional piece of or additional challenge for you. So what we're going to do is to start off with we are actually going to add the root directory onto our list of directories um, with this line here. And then next we will create an integer as a control which basically is going to get the control of our array list so that we can iterate through it. Now we're going to do something a little a little unusual in that we're going to resize this array list and add things to it and obviously then adjust the size as the as the array list increases, the size will increase and that will keep extending the loop we're just about to enter into. So what we're going to do is say we're going to create a loop um, oh, very popular i and then i is less than size okay we're always going to have one item in it so it's always going to go through once um, and we know that because we hard coded a directory up there and as our starting point um, and then what we're going to do is every time we come across any information like a directory or the file we're looking for then we want to print it out so that we can actually see that we've actually found these things otherwise we won't really know what we've we won't easily be able to see that the program's doing what we want it to do um, it's not a particularly elegant way of getting the output but the point here is not to demonstrate the output um, or present the output in a, in, a, in a nice method it is to um, demonstrate that we are going through and outputting all the relevant information and finding all the relevant information so we'll print out that directory and then we're going to do a um, we'll, we'll get our directory we'll get our element from our, our directory array and check to see whether it is a directory do is say check to see if it's a directory and if it's a directory then um, I'm going to call a method that I haven't yet created and what I'm going to do is when I get that when that method returns it's going to return to me all the subdirectories that are in this directory so 
let me just write, I'm writing this line and I'll talk about um, what we're doing here in the absence of having actually written the, the sub the, the method I should have written um, so you can see what we're calling so I'll create that a stub for that method Import the arrays. It's returning the wrong. Yeah. So we're actually going to return a file array. That's why I'm going to write things in the wrong order. Okay. So we know that we've hard coded a a directory. So when we get down to this test, is our directory in the array list a, a directory it's going to be true for the very first time that we enter into this loop because we set our value to a directory so it's going to call this method show files and pass the directory across in there that method's going to do two things one is it's going to use a filter to supply and to write out all the image files that it finds in that directory and then what it's going to do is it's going to go and find all the directories that are in that directory and return them as an array of files which are then going to be added into, appended onto our array list called DIRS, DIRS directories. So any subdirectories in traverse C colon forward slash traverse test are going to be added into our list of directories and then they themselves will then get called and checked to see whether they've got any subdirectories and it will just keep going on and on and on checking each one but because they're all added in a particular order as we go through them it will do all the it will do the top level directory first then it will do all the subdirectories from that are in traverse test then it will do all the subdirectories under the first subdirectory um, that was under traverse test and then it will move on to the next one. So it will do it breadth first, achieving what we were trying to do. The only thing we need to do now is we need to make sure that um, we resize our size variable because we've just added a whole load of directories in or we, we potentially have added in a whole load of directories. So we just need to get the new size and so that will feed into this for loop up here so I will start with zero then it will be one and as so long as there's at least two items in there then it will keep going and it will keep going and keep going until there are no more and then it will stop because it will have processed all of the subdirectories so that's how we we handle that so next we need to do is we need to have a look at how we process everything that's in a sub in a directory and run it out to the console. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a try statement um, because um, we're going to have to catch a null pointer exception. Uh, um, so let's actually put that in now. Uh, Null pointer exception MPE. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get our file array, and we're going to have a file array of images because that's what we're after, and then we'll take um, our file, which actually should be called directory, but never mind, we'll keep it as file because that's what we've got here. Um, 
and then we're going to get our list of files and, we're gonna, and then this is the, the, the bit where we use our filter we're going to say new name um, fil filter um, what is it option um, and there we are so what will get returned is an array of any of the files that meet yeah, that's fine. Um, that meet the, the filter that we created earlier so that's nice and simple and then what we'll do is we'll just whiz through that whiz through all of the, the values returned image images and we will simply print it out um, maybe it should be an image but we'll use file because it's still a file street speaking Oops. there we are and that will print it all out but we're not done yet because whilst we've done all of that um, the next thing we want to do is we want to also um, return a list of the directories so we're going to create a directory filter or a file filter called directory filter um, and um, well we're going to create an inner class actually let's do that this is going to be create we'll create an inner class called directory filter um, very similar to the filter class we created and in fact had we thought more about this and here's a good little um, teaser what would you do in order to be able to use the one object to do both what we're going to do here which is get a directory and also get images how would you change what's done because I'm doing exactly the same thing here as I did in the file filter uh, file name filter option class um, but I'm just doing this as an inner class um, so there we go uh, final two things is we obviously need to get our files, our, our array of files, um, and return them. Now, I could have done this in one line, but I don't like to do things in one line if I'm just trying to show what's going on. Um, it's sometimes better to do it in more than one line, because then people can see the can see how it's put together. Um, I'm not liking the look of that at all. And there we are, and then we're going to return it. Return files, which gives us our return file array, and everyone's happy. And if I just save that, okay. we're ready to go so I've got my traverse test object here and um, so we'll expect to see the traverse test um, directory listed there are some text files in here which we wouldn't expect to see and there are some PNG files which we would then we've got Eclipse, Java, Log4j I'm going to Eclipse I've got a zip file and two PNGs 
So I'd expect to see the PNGs and not the zip file. Now if we go in the Java directory, I've got two JPEGs and two executables. So I'd expect to see the JPEGs and not the executables. And then if we go into log4, I've got another two JPEGs and a jar and a dot properties file. So I'd expect to see that. So let's give it a quick run and see what we get. Now everything's been written out to the console, so the result will be seen in this part down here. And there we are. We can see we've got our traverse test directory. We've got our three image, our three files. Um, hang on, two are PNG and one is a JPEG. Yep, so two are PNGs and one was a JPEG. That's fine. Uh, then we've got the Eclipse directory there with two PNGs, which is right. Our Java directory with two JPEGs, also right. Our log for J with two JPEGs, and that's it. There were no text files, there were no zip files, there were no executable files, there were no dot property files, no jar files. So there we are. There's our program going through our directory. So there we are. In this tutorial, we took a look at how to traverse the file system, and what we've done is we've started at the top, and we've come down, gone breadth first, dropped down again, gone breadth first again. And we've also taken the opportunity to apply a filter so that we were only pulling out image files. As you notice, we stepped over the jars and the text files and just listed the image files using a filter. Um, so I hope you had fun with that. Um, hope you carry on coding and um, come back to the site and have a look at what other things there are from time to time. You can find us at www.softwarepulse.co.uk. You can also find all the source code from today there. So um, if, like me, you don't particularly like typing all the coding, then help yourselves, go along. Um, all I ask is for your um, email address, and then we send you a link so you can download the code. Um, and that also allows us the opportunity to keep you up to date with anything new that comes along. And anytime you've decided you've had enough and aren't interested anymore, then you can unsubscribe and we'll stop sending you any, any information. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching.